thank you very much and uh, I, uh, for inviting us and um, I feel a bit as if well, I'll, I'll say first of all that um, Tony and I are no experts, we're not in planning, we're not environmentalists in, in the sense that we're uh, botanists or ecologists. Like many of you in the audience, we're just people who live locally, who like a local bit of bush and again like many of you, um, we've had to fight for our bits of bush. So um, in some ways uh, I'll, I'll be as brief as I can but I suppose the, the, the minor bit of value in this presentation is simply perhaps a reminder of the fights we have to have, the fights we're still having and in the case of Hawkvale how far we've come but how far we yet have to go in the conservation of, uh, of our bush. Um, and uh, as was mentioned, this is Hawkvale on the front of the Urban Bushland Council uh, uh, booklet, so I won't go into what's actually there. It's suffice to say that it's beautiful and that if you look on a map, you've got the Perth Airport to the left, you've got the Darling Range to the right, Kalamunda on the right, and in the middle is High Wycombe uh, area and you probably know that it's FIFO Central. It's where a lot of housing development is going on now. But we're going back to uh, the late 90s, in fact, when Tony Fowler, my colleague here, and I were on the Nature Reserves Preservation Group, and we still are, Tony still is, and this was a local Kalamunda group who were formed to try and look after, hang on to the reserves in Kalamunda Shire when the Shire was going to uh, sell them all off. Uh, the bush is um, on our doorstep and we were quite upset when uh, it was suggested that uh, the bush at Hawkvale, which is some 37 hectares, uh, would, be, um, would be destroyed. Um, and it was a formidable fight because our opponent, if you call it that, was the Active Foundation, which assists people with inter intellectual disabilities uh, and their families, a very worthwhile organisation. They'd been given parcels of land in the 50s, far out in the, you know, in the bush, which, as we now know, is being swallowed up by urbanisation. So it gets back to the point just made about planning, planning, planning. Uh, this patch of bush was uh, in 92, calm, now deck, recommended its conservation. In 93, the State Planning Commission rezoned the area as urban under the Metropolitan Region Scheme. In 93, uh, that same year, the Liberal Coalition government released its policies for the 90s statement, which contained a promise that it would offer financial incentives to private landowners to preserve Banksia woodlands, specifically, in light of the urgent threat to this vegetation type. And that's what Hawkvale is, beautiful Jarrah Banksia woodland, which the, urban, uh, the UBC took a walk through quite recently. So in 95, the Department of Environmental Protection nominated the area one of the most species-rich sites of 700 surveyed. So far, so good. You've all got your own stories along similar lines, I'm sure. In September 96, Active announced it wanted to use all 37 hectares of its land for 270 homes, 37 duplexes, a retirement village, and aged care unit. They called it Australia's first integrated community for the intellectually disabled. Several blocks would be sold so they could get some money back and they promised to preserve 3.12 hectares. And so, just one of the many clashes between planning for people and environmental protection began. Now, Hawkvale had already been seen, as I've mentioned, as a very uh, important piece of uh, bushland. There'd been a DEP recommendation that 20 hectares, the best bush areas on the site, uh, should be conserved to maintain its environmental value. And other government departments, um, the WA Conservation Council and other bush groups like us said, please keep the bush. Well, things got fairly heated. Active, understandably, felt uh, that they were being thwarted in their valid ambitions. Um, Ian Taylor, the former <coughs> opposition leader, weighed in. His wife was on the active board and he attacked the Cons Council and Hills-based Greenies, who know no bounds, he said, in throwing up obstacles. In 96, the Kalamunda Shire um, actually did try to find a way through this. They, um, under the 
um, planning, town planning scheme have to comply with the State Planning Commission, so they were in a corner. But several councillors came and saw the bush and they vowed to help find a solution for all parties, which is perhaps one of the points that's been made today, that local government does have a role and does try to uh, mediate in, in these issues. Of course, the talk didn't go down well. Tony received a, a call from uh, one active member who said, I like to fight by Queensbury rules, but if push comes to shove, I'm prepared to fight dirty. Well, in November 96, John Day, who's our local member uh, for Darling Range, um, said he'd support Kalamunda Shire in its decision to seek the retention of the 20 hectares and, um, you know, try and find some sort of comp compromise. Um, and as you know, and as you heard, uh, John Day was one of the people involved in creating uh, Bush Forever, um, the urban bush plan. Um, so it was also in a, a coming up to an election, by the way, so maybe John was wanting to tell us the right things. But the point is, that there was goodwill, and there, were, there was goodwill, but there were different sides. And he said, um, the urban bushland strategy, he said, has established a target of 10% of original bushland of each type of vegetation. It's estimated only 8% of the vegetation type on, of this land is, uh, remains now. Again, you've heard all these, these stories, uh, all these issues. Um, this fight has been fought on many fronts. Um, in that year, the Kalamunda Shire councillors voted uh, eight to four in favor of preserving the bushland that had been recognized as significant in all the reports I mentioned. Well, uh, the state election complicated things. We in the NRPG had to keep up with all the promises the different parties made, lobby the candidates, send introductory letters to the next person who was taking on the ministerial portfolio. In 97, we had assurances from Graham Kirath, who, as you know, signed off on uh, uh, Bush Forever. He was trying to find solutions for us, and so was Cheryl Edwards. And we pointed out endlessly that uh, and I quote for one of our letters, we're very pleased that uh, you have singled out Hawkvale as worthy of conservation under the Perth Bush Plan, which your government has ad admirably undertaken in order to save just such metropolitan bush areas. All in all, what more credentials does a bit of bush need to be saved? Again, I'm sure you've made all these arguments in, your, in the case of your bush. So we urged that there be a compromise. There was a fund, there was money for compensation. Why not compensate active? We said, so much native wood uh, vegetation has been lost in the metro area already. Please help us conserve this beautiful 20 hectares. We were after the best 20 hectares to be saved. Thanking you sincerely for your consideration. Well, Kingsley Dixon and Bronwyn, I know Bronwyn Keary and Greg, I think, uh, had a, had already had a very good look at this land. Kingsley Dixon described it as excellent to outstanding. It was a mini King's Park, he said. He noted that a rare smoke bush, Conosperma mundulata, was growing all over the site. It was declared rare flora, which means minister's permission is needed to clear it. But, in fact, in 97, uh, Graham Keirith decided that uh, the bush could go ahead. Uh, th these are just a couple of the um, cartoons in the paper. It says, uh, we've just beaten back the council, sir, planning minister and coming into range now. This was when Calamunda Shire had said, uh, look, we're not going to uh, give permission without going through a process of trying to find a compromise. Active got cross. Then the... Uh, then the, uh, the issue went to the minister, and as I've just said, uh, uh, Graham Keirith decided Active could go ahead. But this was the kind of uh, media coverage uh, that went on endlessly. <laughs> and uh, in the end, the compromise was that under an agreement reached between the government and Active, 10.4 hectares of the northern section of the bush would be served saved. It was a complicated deal of compromise. Active would get a plant nursery moved at government expense. There was a land swap with Dola land. There was a bit of Shire Reserve, Kalamunda Shire Reserve, um, in the vicinity of Active's housing estate, which would be handed over. A concession would be given on land density to Active. They also got a sum of money. It seemed pretty generous, uh, we felt, 
too active. But that was the compromise. So then we noted it with regret, regret, and again, as I'm sure many of you know, the next stage is you're trying to shore up the deficits. You're trying to say, well, okay, make sure that the, uh, the drains don't um, send all the water back into the uh, saved bush. Um, that was all the kind of, uh, kind of work um, we were doing. We were also, at the same time, um, lobbying <coughs> CALM, then CALM, now DEC, to do something with this bush. Because meanwhile, over the years it took for ACTIVE to start their housing development, lots of damage was being done. So um, with, uh, that was with gritted teeth. We were wi arguing for wider buffer zones, fencing, drainage systems, etc., etc. But I suppose finally what we found so strange was right at the time that uh, the Perth Urban Plan, i.e. Perth uh, Bush Forever, was being formulated. Here was some of the most beautiful bush with the highest priorities and nothing could save the entirety of it. Um, it, was, it seemed to us, uh, it, it seemed to us it, that ultimately we were only able to save less than half the bush and only because we lobbied so hard, we uh, had to run campaigns like this um, and we brought it to the attention of government. Well, today, Hawkville is under the control of DEC, which does periodic work in, in it. But there was a fire. There's been wonderful regrowth of yellow and uh, green kangaroo paw, but there are a lot of weeds. Uh, a rare f flora survey has just been completed, but there are, uh, if you stand on a manicured lawn in Haw at Hawkvale on Active's new housing estate and you look at the bush, it looks scruffy, neglected, uninviting until you walk into it, of course. But quite a lot of people don't do that. It has no friends group, supported by Kalamunda Shire, uh, because the Shire has no role in its management. There is funding from government for regional parks and bush forever sites, as we've heard today. I gather a total of 1.53 million from the Environmental Community Grants Program during this year. But um, it requires somebody to try and go and find those uh, or apply for those uh, funds and people to be on the ground to make sure it happens. Neither Kalamunda Shire nor any community group other than us, uh, the NRPG at arm's length, is available to apply for money. Hawkvale is friendless apart from DEC. And meanwhile, meanwhile, 13 or more years later, Hawkvale is more or less a standard housing area with bush to the north. That's what was left, the bush is, that was saved is at the top, the stuff that was lost is at the bottom. Um, in fact, uh, and just, uh, our active in fact didn't achieve a lot of its ambitions for Hawkvale, it really is just pretty well a standard housing uh, area. Uh, finally, I'll just mention the other bush forever sites around Kalamunda Shire. There are 13, of which six are under the Shire's management. They appear in the Shire's inventory of rare flora and its wildlife corridor plan. There's a bit of weed control, there's some dieback control, but it's very scarce, and as you've heard today, there's no budget for it. Poison Gully, one of the Bush Forever sites, is often vandalized and supervised or looked after by two people. Another Bush Forever site made a veil, got some money from uh, EMRC and DEC applied, and they got about $10,000 each and there's some care going into it. But this is my final comment. What a Kalamunda Shire person told me this week, an employee, about Bush Forever, quote, it's a planning tool, and occasionally mentioning that it, uh, and occasionally mentioning that it's a Bush Forever site helps us to get the odd grant. But there's no continuity and no funding, so how can we do a lot? That person had also heard a rumor I don't know if it's true, that DEC funding for bush grants might not be around next year. I'm just mentioning this. I don't know if it's true, but that's a perception out there. If I had to say what the underlying message is in our experience of Hawkvale, trying to save one patch of bush, it's that human need for infrastructure, housing, will always outweigh the need to conserve bush. Until, that is, we decide as a society that, as Bronwyn Keary said this morning, Bushland is a primary land use purpose. 
Tony and I welcome the day when bushland corridors and recreational wild places are viewed as fundamentally, uncompromisingly important as bricks, mortar and concrete. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Jeff Barrett uh, from the Regional College is with Jeff um, The effects for that uh, story is big, it's interesting. Um, crucially, you were saying there's no friends group established, which uh, more and more we're starting to realise is essential to the suburban bushland areas being preserved. Um, can you tease that out? Why, why do you think that hasn't happened given the, the history? Uh, the Shire, well, as I said, Kalamunda Shire is, in our area, is, is a, a very helpful Shire in, in that it helps friends groups, uh, I think there are some 40 in Kalamunda Shire, friends groups, to, to uh, yeah, uh, the Kalamunda Shire helps friends groups to do work on, on ground, and I'm sure most shires and uh, councils do that. But uh, it's your bush, and uh, it, it seems as if ownership there is not a strong concept of ownership over that area. And I would agree with you that that sense of ownership is the thing that, um, that in a sense, um, what's the word, uh, gives more validation and, and gives the possibility of ongoing life for a, for a, a bushland area. If, you, if you're interested in it and you love it, then you'll do something in it. And I must say that I've just been out uh, bush with a, w, a WWF guy who um, gives to uh, farmers a very small little device, which is a motion stop camera. It costs $350. And you put it in the bush, and it will record whatever wildlife comes there and will record only the moving thing. So they've got this amazing footage of numbats on um, trees, of uh, spiny bearded dragons, I think it is, going up into uh, hollows, etc. You show that to any person and they get so enthused to see that there's something in their bush that is living and that they'll probably never see because it's often nocturnal. That's when that sense of ownership comes and that's what I believe is what saves uh, bushland. Can you another question? Um, question. Oh, it's sort of a question, but same deal. Uh, how do you how do you sell the protection of bush? And we have to sell it, unfortunately, because we're competing with all these other land uses. And I don't know, quality of life is something I try and explain to people. That sort of you know this lovely you know quality of life living in Perth, which has really changed. I don't know if that that works. But I, I I really believe, and again, uh, Bronwyn mentioned it. And Bronwyn actually years ago prepared wonderful materials for schools, which I used. At Gooseberry Hill Primary School and these were remarkable resources and look I can only speak for myself in my child's primary school and my seniors in their high school we were teaching kids about it and it's a it's a trite answer but that's all I can say in response to your question you get the kids interested and then the parents come in too and you do things you don't preach to them you get them to come with you you know that's I suppose what I've, what I've felt and what I'm sure Tony has felt too. One question over here. Um, as I understand it, you've spent something like 14 years and you've preserved 10 hectares and there's no friends group. So who did this? You and how many other people? Um, oh, there were... Uh, Close, close to 100 members each year uh, join the NRPG. Yes, a rather large yes, lobby yes, group yes. in the Shire. Yeah, and that wasn't the only campaign. There was also uh, um, the um, on Kalamunda Road. If, if you remember, uh, BCG, BCG um, destroyed some bush. To, well, to make a brickworks, and that was another campaign. But uh, as I say, I, we're not. There are so many of these friends groups and, and other groups that are doing this sort of work, but it's exhausting, isn't it? And that's the problem, and that's why I think people get so frustrated about the lack of resources on the ground, and, and they're not blaming DEC or, um, you know, individual government departments, but they're just saying, please help us to save this stuff. 
And one thing we haven't mentioned, of course, is climate change, because that's the next thing that is uh, coming in uh, and likely to affect our smaller reserves and our medium-sized ones. And Hawke Vale is one of those reserves, judging by the things uh, Bronwyn and uh, Greg have said recently, that is being affected by, by climate change already.